Right, so just before we get into this podcast, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to you guys because without you, I wouldn't have had the chance to meet St. Leo and this whole podcast episode would never have been possible. Also, at the end of the podcast, Leo and I briefly talk about making some merch together. So as of right now, arthurtv.shop is live and there's so much cool merch there. Once this podcast is over, feel free to go check it out because it's a great way to rep the brand and support the channel. That being said though, your support on watching, liking and commenting on my videos is more than enough. So if you can't afford it, genuinely don't worry about it. At the moment, I only have one mic so Leo is one had to pick up my voice too and so it might be a bit quiet but hopefully if this video and the merch do okay and you guys want Leo to come back to react to some freakouts or answer some more questions then we'll look at getting a second mic and maybe a camera too. Just let us know down below if that's something you'd like to see in future. Right anyway that's enough promo so let's get into the podcast. Enjoy. So hello everyone and welcome to the first ever podcast episode and I'm here with Saint Leo himself. Thank you Arthur. Hello everybody. Um, Arthur thank you so much for inviting me along today to do this. My pleasure. It's going to be a, a great opportunity to get to know me better. Yeah. So, and I understand you've got some questions already for me. Yeah. So, um, as you may know, obviously, you're the patron saint of the YouTube channel. <laughs> when I put up on my community tab saying that you were going to come on, everyone just went crazy. It was my most ever liked post awesome. on the community tab. I had so many great questions and we'll take a look at yeah. some of them now. And it's bizarre how popular the show is, you know, 20, 20 years on. Yeah. And people still like it people still want to watch it <laughs> exactly yeah it's one of those things that i guess never gets old isn't it like if someone has a crazy freak out that never really goes yeah. like out of fashion or people, out of the news people like that excitement and drama and i think the other thing as well because you know everybody flies through airports everybody yeah. kind of saves money to go on that special occasion so i think you know a show in an airport is something that everybody can relate to yeah that's stress. so true it's so relatable yeah. right let's get into some of the first questions okay start us off with a bit of background so we've seen you appear on the show as the freak out episodes go along but how did it all start for you like when did you start working with easyjet and when did airline come into the picture so i think you know ever since i was a child i was always obsessed with airplanes and aviation um and it got to the stage where i was coming up towards work experience at school. And I said, right, I really want to work at an airport. And the school was like, no, 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 we've never had anyone do that before. So anyway, I went out of my way to do that, got insured and then presented them with my plan as to how I was going to do work experience in an airport. And I did that for a couple of months. And then I heard the EasyJet was starting and I really liked the look of that. It was really exciting. Mm. Um, so that's kind of the start of, of my EasyJet career. Okay. Where did the actual airline show come in? So they were doing a bit of filming and it was, was strange at first. So we knew the cameras were there um, and generally it took them around six months to shoot in a series. So we didn't know what was going to be used or who was going to be used. And I remember on training, they put like a radio mic on me, did a bit of filming. I, I didn't think anything of it at the time. I just thought, all oh, right, okay, I'm just kind of going to be a little part of this program yeah and then I remember kind of six months it was because it was a show at the time there was only four or five channels so it was really popular on a Friday evening and I remember walking down taking my dog to news agents on a Sunday to get the paper and I just saw my face on all of the <laughs> the um, the magazines and radio times and stuff and I was like oh my god <laughs> so I shot out of the shop and went home and just kind of locked myself in my room and then waited for the avalanche really but it, it was amazing so yeah Oh yeah, I can imagine. So since that's happened, what, a decade, decade, two, two decades ago, how's the sort of popularity of the airline show gone like up and down? Because obviously I feel like we're kind of reintroducing it to a younger generation at the moment who weren't watching it on the TV. But at the same time, I get quite a lot of people that comment and go, I, I remember what, coming home from school and watching this, or like, yeah. I used to watch this with my family, this is so great. So yeah. did it, was it kind of like popular and then it fizzled out a bit and then it's come back in recently? Yeah, or? so it was, it was like hugely popular when it was on. And then I think, you know, they always said that was the number one flagship documentary. It yeah. was real life, nothing was scripted. It wasn't you know, kind of like an only way of Essex thing where there's some yeah. scripts going on. So it was real, real life. Okay. Um, so it was kind of the flagship docu-soap um, and it peaked then, then it went quiet. And then I think with the influences of YouTube, social media, it really mm. took a peak. And I think, you know, almost last year, um, when I think, you know, Rylan, who is a real big fan of airline and the show, obsessed yeah. with aviation, yeah. invited us on this morning. Yeah. Um, and then from that, it's kind of peaked again. So I, I kind of started this kind of in September 
Um, and it was a slow burner, so I'm just curious. It was episode four, and this is November 4th, that I first said the word Saint Leo. And that's kind of become a bit of catchphrase from my <laughs> channel. I was just wondering, when did you first hear yourself being called Saint Leo? I think it was when something came up on Twitter uh, um, <laughs> that was from you. And I looked okay. at it and I thought, oh my God, you know, I wouldn't imagine customers would always call me Saint Leo. <laughs> uh, I guess they weren't too happy at the time, no, were they? Yeah. But actually, looking back, there were some really nice things that we were able to do because, mm. you know, you could go out of your way and help customers. Yeah, that's true. So I... it's really nice. And, you know, it's a great title. So thanks, everybody. I really <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's one of the kind of things that people might not see that side because we look at the airline freakouts and yep. we don't really see all the nice stories. So when I'm filtering through, I see a lot of things where I kind of think, oh, I'd love to just put that in. Yep. For example, I think someone brought their kids into the yep. airport. There was a really sweet episode mm -hmm. where that happened um i did actually end i think it was part 11 on a really yeah. nice story i don't know if you remember it it was a french girl and they were going to a wedding in glasgow maybe yeah. and you eventually like got them on even though they didn't think they was gonna go on and everyone at the end was like this is the most wholesome episode ever i yeah. love it i love leo yeah and i was like oh we've just got to get him on the show awesome but um, yeah there are were some real excellent and i think like i said everyone can emotionally attach to it missing yeah. flights and yeah, you know. that's so true. What have most of your fan interactions been like over the last few months? I see you quite like now sometimes post like, oh, this is a really nice message I received today. Yep. What kind of things do people message you when they talk to you at the moment? So I get mostly like really nice comments about how I've handled a situation. Mm. I get lots of people that I think were younger when the show was on yeah. and then have from the show always wanted to get in aviation. Um, as a career so I get lots of comments saying actually you're now the reason why I'm working in aviation and why I'm flying oh, that's so cool. and why I'm dealing with customers and you just go wow you know so yeah. from being a child and now you're doing that because yeah. you, you've you seen a, a show is phenomenal it's so cool because yeah that's yeah. you've influenced someone's life like yeah. massively that's actually one of the FAQs that I was going to ask you later, but yeah. I might as well talk about it now, is that quite a lot of people were going like, I just want you to tell Leo, like he's the reason I got into aviation. Yep. There are people messaging me with planes as their profile pictures mm -hmm. and go, the whole reason I'm into this is because of Leo or people that actually yep. work in airports. I think it must be quite a cool feeling knowing how positively you've influenced so many people's lives like that. It's cool, but it's a great industry as well. Yeah. So once you're in it, it's very difficult to get out of it. You love it, you fall in love with it. Um, and the people there as well are so great. You really get a team kind of feeling and environment. So I'm really pleased that hopefully I've been able to influence some people in their career direction yeah. that might have otherwise been directionless. Is that a word? Yeah. yeah. And, and so how long, how long were you with EasyJet then? Uh, so I was with EasyJet for 16 years. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. So yeah, it was a long, long time. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, and I saw the company grow from four aircraft to up to like 150 aircraft. That's that amazing. Got. So it's been through some real, real growth. Yeah. And you're still involved in there? Like, still, it's, like I say, once you're in that industry, it's very difficult. You don't want to get out of it. Yeah. Um, so I do kind of project management stuff, custom, customer experience, training. Um, so yeah, so still in aviation. Very cool. Right, okay, so should we move on to some Q&As from the Go fans? For it. So I'm going to select the top 10 comments. Yep. Kind of easy for me to choose because there were so many great yep. comments that I would have loved to ask. So we'll start off, you might have seen this. Are you secretly Arthur or are you two different people? A lot of people think I'm actually you, commentating on the old C <laughs> series under a pseudonym. Can you just confirm that we're not the same person? Look, so I confirm we're definitely not the same person. <laughs> Arthur is much younger and slimmer <laughs> than I am. I wish I was St. Leo. I wish I had the patience um, <laughs> So, no, look, we're two different people. We're sat here together now in the same room next to each other. <laughs> how, how funny. What's your kind of outside of work, your family life at the moment? So one of the things we featured yeah. on the show, another wholesome uh, moment that really that people really liked mm. to watch about you was you at the Christmas party with yes. Mel. I don't know if you remember that. I do, and when I everyone, got drunk. Yeah, yes. and, and you were kind of going, oh, I want yeah. to kind of like see how it goes. And then there was a moment where you kissed and everyone was like, oh, that's our boy Leo. Oh my God. Proud moment. So quite a lot of people were asking what happened with Mel after that and... So What's interestingly, so there? I mean, so I was married and then got divorced. Mm -hmm. um, I've got two children. Um, I did have a stillborn. Mm -hmm. um, so that was quite difficult. I'm sorry to hear. Um, but in terms of Mel, so yeah, I remember that. We, yeah, that was a great Christmas party that EasyJet threw. And actually last month we got in touch again. No way. Yeah. Oh, right. So okay. we're talking. That's so funny. Yeah. But you didn't say together then? No. no. Oh, okay. No. Uh, well, it was a who knows what the future will hold, right? Yeah, well, I mean, you're back in touch now. <laughs> yeah. No, but it was a really, it was a really wholesome yeah. story. 
Okay, next one. One of the key lines that comes up almost every episode mm. is someone goes, it's easy jet, not hard jet. It's supposed to be easy. Mm. How many times did you hear that throughout your uh, career? Do you know what? If you did have a pound every time I heard that comment, <laughs> I definitely would be a millionaire. <laughs> uh, continuously. All the time. All the time. Oh, and actually... It was mainly customers either forgetting their passport or ID or turning up late. Yeah. Um, it was always that their commented, fault. commented, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think that's why people yeah. love the line. There's a line from Jane and she says, yeah. it is it's easy. It's easy if you get here on time. Exactly, I think, yeah. Yeah, Jane was is amazing, right, at one-liners. Iconic, yeah. Um, and I think, you know, one I saw the other day of her when a customer complained that he wasn't boarded onto an aircraft. And I think she said something like, in all due respect, we can't board you from a coffee shop. Yeah. Um, and she <laughs> comes out with episode. some comments which yeah. are just so true and yeah. right. And yeah. people kind of go, yeah. <laughs> It's, I can so imagine it's something yeah. everyone wishes they could say and she yeah. just she comes out with pulls it off so clinically yeah. here's kind of a funny one so have you ever made a mistake that caused someone to miss a flight so it's usually people turning up late like say not having their passport have you ever done something where you've gone you can't get on this flight unfortunately it's my fault and if so how did they react yeah so no I did I think when you have you know that customer desk in terms when there's disruption or bad weather you're dealing with so many things it's easy to make a mistake and I think there was one time that I did make a mistake where I was due to transfer a customer in the system and I didn't okay and they come back and I just always think if you're transparent and honest and say look I made a mistake yeah they're oh, okay enough. and I think it was lucky they was on a similar destination and I got them out that evening oh cool so you sort that out anyway yeah. that's good when you say like it it was a bit strange when people were coming in with the cameras starting to film yep. it. Do you think passengers played up to the camera? Because people, a lot of people comment saying there's no way this is real. No one would behave like this, especially in front of a camera. Like you say, it was completely real, wasn't it? Do you think people made more of a scene because of the camera? Or? No, I think, no, not at all. I think the adrenaline of the situation that they're going through, i.e., forgetting their passport, turning up late for yeah. an important interview, overrides anything. Okay. So they would just come in, do their screaming and shouting. Yeah. It was only then afterwards they'd done that. They'd go, what What? What was the camera here for? Oh, right. Okay, um, so so were... a lot of them had no idea that it was for a documentary. <laughs> you just wow. assume it was just training or... Yeah. And it was only then afterwards they'd go, what's that for? So yeah. no, apps, I don't think customers did play up to the camera. That's quite good then, because, yeah, yeah, it was all just genuine It was real genuine, real life time. stuff that was happening. Has any customer ever stepped in to defend you? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. When it got... When, you know, when you've got cu one customer that's been completely unreasonable... Yeah. And you then sometimes get the other customer kind of say, no, 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 leave him alone. He's trying to do his best. He's trying yeah. to help, mate. Oh, that's nice. Okay, yeah. That's good to hear. Oh, this is another good one. So you're always so cool headed on camera. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time where, when a customer broke you and you snapped at them or you had to leave? There was. So I did. There's like a tactic. So, you know, if it was getting too much, I was, I'm quite a calm person in yeah. a stressful situation. If things did get too much, I used to go in the back room for just like a bit of a breather. Okay. Imagine them naked and then <laughs> <laughs> come back out again, refreshed, calm, cool and collective and restart the conversation. Okay. But you never snapped at a customer? Never snapped. Nothing big like that? Never. Yeah. To be fair, it is, it is yeah. really impressive. There are so many times when I think everyone's watching and they go, yeah. it's so and impressive. People used to you just... come up to me in the street and say, I've got no idea yeah. how you didn't hit that bloke I, on the one exactly, we watched on yeah. Friday night. It's crazy. Yeah. What's the craziest passenger freak out you've ever experienced that wasn't captured on the show? Have you got any crazy stories that weren't actually on airline? Oh, let me think. It was loads. I know the big one that was captured on airline was the guy with the hats who reminded me of Frank Butcher from EastEnders. Uh, of course, that yeah. was going crazy. Why he was not? The, why not, guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was. He was the biggest, biggest one. Episode two. Um, that was. And I do remember there was one that actually it become too unsafe for them to film, okay. where a customer was spitting at me and threatening to break every bone in my body. Oh goodness! And actually, there does become a point where then that yeah. could be used in. Evidence, so I think they always just kind of okay. used to shut off at that stage. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with all the excuses that everyone gives you, what's the weirdest one you've ever heard for someone missing their flight? When they've come up and gone, I'm really sorry, I'm late, I know I've missed check-in, but this is the reason, please still put me on. Oh, there's loads of reasons. <laughs> I can imagine you doing some weird stuff over the years. Oh, I can't think. There is just so many strangest excuses. 
Yeah, I can't. Nothing that springs nothing, to mind. No, Fair there's enough. loads. Okay, so yeah. now you've got kids. What's yeah. harder to deal with? Kid tantrums or entitled adult ones? In all honesty, yeah. adult ones. They are actually yeah. hard for kids. Oh, goodness. Airline is a walk in the park compared to two children <laughs> fighting in a war zone over the weekend. Oh, goodness. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm not surprised. Yeah. After some of the things we've seen, uh, it's been pretty crazy. Yeah. Another thing people always ask about is merchandise. Now we kind of already we kind of had a little chat about this yeah. just before we started. People, I mean, you've become a like I say the patron saint of my channel. I owe so much of of the success of the channel down to you. And people always are going, "Are you ever going to release some Saint Leo merch?" What would be your opinions on getting t-shirts, mugs out with phrases like pictures of you? Would you be up for that at some Absolutely. point? Absolutely. You'd be up for it? Yeah. With okay. some of the comments that we used in the show, definitely. Yeah, because there, yep. there are some iconic quotes. So you'd be down yep. for that. Yep. Right. Okay. So guys, if you're listening, we'll... Let us know. Yeah. Let us know what you want to yep. see and we'll um, we'll try and get some stuff out for you soon. Um, is there anything you want to say to, to the I guys? just think, you know, guys, thanks for watching. It's unbelievable 20 years on that people have still got an interest in the show. Um, it was a fantastic time in my life. I love customers. I love the interaction. And to just think that people are still wanting to interact this many years on is fantastic. So please keep watching. Please keep commenting. I'd love to stay in touch with everybody. Thanks, everyone, for listening in. Thanks again to Leo for, for coming on the show. And, uh, Thanks, we'll, Arthur. No, and, I, and I'm look, one of the few people that have seen Arthur's face. I know what he looks <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah. Have you got anything to say on that? I might have to cut this guys, out. Guys, you'd be, you'd be impressed. You'd be oh, pleased. You're too kind. <laughs> right, thanks a lot, Leo. If you want to stay in touch with Leo, his Twitter and Instagrams are on the screen now and they'll also be linked down below along with mine. As I said before, the first release of merch is now available at arthurtv.shop. The link to that will be down below as well. And yeah, as always, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to this as much as Leo and I did making it. And if you want to see Leo back for some freak out reactions or some more Q&As in future, just let us know down below. Bye for now. Take care. Bye.